head, see your head. You got where you from, man? Alright, so it's kinda of funny. It's all the smoke, baby. Not all the drink. I had to. What's up, y'all? How y'all be, man? man? How you doing, my man? How you be? Arms out. Oh, man. How, how, how do these work? How do they work? Like, 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 do you have to refill? Press down, and yeah, they're refillable with a torch. They're like Jeff for Gil. My guys at Hermie Hearn. My guy. Oh, Hermie Hearn. My guy. How you guys? How y'all doing? How are you? All the smizz oak. Yay. All the smizz oak. No, I don't smell like smoke though. No, you smell <laughs> like smoke. Yeah. It smells like something good. Can I throw a microphone on you? Yes, you can. Come on. Michael. Hey, hey, hey. You're my boy. Can we throw a microphone on you? Let me get a mic. Let's get some content out of this shit. The good brothers. I thought we was freestyling. You got the cue cards, nigga. Y'all be freestyling, man. Come on, man. We freestyling tonight. We freestyling tonight, brother. What's up, man? Your sons, man, might cook guild. Yeah, listen. Your sons, no, I'm talking about, no, now it's different. They might barbecue guild now. It's all the smoke, baby. Not all the drink. Happy birthday, Happy birthday too. Happy birthday, too. Happy birthday, too. Happy birthday, too. I was his manager when he was a rap back in the day. So after I started Major Figures, I managed him. I had him doing some free shows and shit like that, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, see? Who looked like the manager? I looked like I was more of a manager than, he ain't had no jury on, as you can see. So he was, he was. No, they did not run, I, I, don't, they never, I never seen nobody run. That's just me. Well, that was when I was, that was his first show he did. Uh, that was at Dances, he did the show. I got $200, he didn't know about it. It was a promo run. I had him on a promo run. And uh, he did the show for free. I walked away with 200, yeah, you know. No, we just know our parts. We know how to play our parts. Uh, I be in the field more, I go and do the research and when, and when it's that time, I call Gil, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go do this meeting. And then he'd come. 
And then, then it's time to go to legal, you know what I mean? So uh, I think what's so great about us, we know our roles. I think we come from an environment where it's though everybody ego, egoed out. I could do it by myself, I don't need nobody. And um, we understand our, our roles in the organization. And we understand where we're trying to go. And I think that helped us. Coming from a city like Philadelphia, it's a real hard uh, city with, uh, because in Philly, a lot of us are subscribed to being thorough, cool, and tough for no reason. It ain't, it ain't paying no bills. Uh, it ain't sending no kids to college. Me and Gil crack that whole shit and laugh at it. So, you know, when you see us, we just laughing at shit like this shit is just a joke. This is a joke, you know what I mean? So we just uh, try to stay focused on that and the main goal and to show young kids because the young kids, they really what it's about because they soaking up the game. As adults, they already got to figure out you can't tell them that and they stuck in their way sometimes. So I just, we just try to focus on the youngins and just try to show them it's another way. It's another route you could take. And this media route, the media route, you know, you're getting basketball players money out this and football players money, baseball money. So it's like, you could take the media route, you ain't gotta know how to play ball, you know what I mean? You ain't gotta know how to rap. You could just take another route. And that's what we just trying to show them through the platform. I'm walking to Yarmouth, Dallas Penitentiary, and they had Sita. You remember the lady named Sita, the cartoon lady used to be on BT? I come in from the yard, sit down, I'm like, taking my sneaks off, and she playing. That video come on. Yeah, that's us. I'm like, I don't know what the f it is, because I'm in the mountains. I don't, I'm just like, I'm looking, I'm like, damn. I see that shit. I'm like, the first thing I'm thinking, I gotta get me a lawyer, because I know I wasn't getting my management money because he was a f out there. I'm like, this is getting show money. I'm like, I gotta get my, f so I'm trying to, I get with the old head in the law library. I'm like, I need you to put a lawsuit in for me, right? So he like, all right, I got you. I tell him what it was. He said, man, I, I don't know. I said, How? he said, where the contract? I said, it's, it's Nanny House. I don't know where is that. I mean, so, but when I seen that shit, that shit hit me in my head and I was like, oh, we really could go to the next level. Cause this some shit that was thought about in Nanny Basement in North Philly in the ghetto. And that shit took it to BET. And these dudes going around doing shows, they was like number one on the charts. I said, oh no, f that. I just start reading more. Read more. I'm calling home from jail. He's telling me about all these because they blackballing me. This time thirty. I'm telling him. I'm telling him. I'm talking to him like, who the f you think you is? You tripping? Nigga. You ain't. You ain't that hot. He's a local rapper. Fuck is you. That's how I'm talking to him on the phone because I don't understand impact because I'm in a cell. I had like ten raps. Like literally the song that was number one. If you from Philly, you remember. You got love for Gilly. I got. Love. Let's be for real, bro. I went to the studio. I ain't even know how to f do a song. I was like, what y'all want me to rap about? Nigga like, shout out to Marcus Grant. He said, make a song about what you got love for and what you don't got love for. I was like, all right, that's easy. I went through some beats, picked a beat. This this like 96, man. I went right in. I got love for thug and thug missus. Marijuana smoke, mo poppers and dime sippers, drug dealers, credit card counterfeiters, locked up in all of my broke. I got love for wild parties and wild bodies, sweaters by money, killers like John Gotti, bad women in short dresses with huge breasts, the buggy y'all bends with the triple head breasts. Right, yeah, you're talking that. That's enough. I'm talking that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nut ass nigga, man. I was talking that sh nigga. Next thing I know, they was offering 600,000, 700,000, 800,000. Yeah, all right. I had 12 racks, man. So who did you sign go with? Swath House. Tony Draper. Uh, Tony Draper, Draper, man. One of, my, one of my friends to this day, one of my best friends to this day, was the first person to give me six figures. I was a young kid. You know, he socked it to my pocket, took the rollie off his arm, the presidential off his arm, put it on my arm, you know, took me all over the world, opened my eyes up, took me to every meeting. You understand, me and Rick Ross were signed on the same label at the same time. He was Teflon back then. You know what I mean? Eight Ball, MJG, you know, him and Tony Draper is good friends. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Tony Draper, man, was a mentor of mine and really taught me how to be independent and stand on your own because he was one of the first independent people to do it and when i got to, flew to houston when he was trying to sign me and i got to his house and he was like 25 years old and that, that
gates opened up to his house, and I seen a motherfucker, eight cars and a Viper with zip up windows. I was like, oh, this the fuck on, man. This shit real, man. Out here getting money like this. And that shit opened my eyes up, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Tony Drake. Let's talk about the podcast space for a second, y'all. Y'all y'all been in the podcast space for a minute. You seen podcasts rise and fall. And I know y'all don't consider a lot of people as competition because we talk about it, but a lot of people do. How y'all can continue to Maintain who y'all are, but continue to stay at the st stay at the top of the podcast room. I mean, we just do what we do. You know what I mean? We don't worry about what nobody else is doing. We got our own obligations. We partners with DraftKings, man. Right. We partners with with just so many people. Jack Pocket. You know what I'm saying? So many different companies. So it's like, bro, if you competing with us, then then you competing with yourself. Cause I, what you go ahead. You can dress better than me, you got that nigga. Your car can be better than mine, you got that nigga. My kids is happy. My wife is happy. My, my, my mother happy. I just took my whole family to, to out the country, man, on a vacation, man. I lost 200,000, man. I'm not in competition with you, my nigga. I'm living my best life because we only die once. So if you want to be in competition with me, go ahead. I don't even recognize you. I don't see you. So what's your what's your response when somebody say that the only people in podcasts that podcasts they respond to is Joe Rogan and Alice Cooper? I mean, if that's how you feel, you know. One thing about me, I, don't, I ain't no nigga that get my feelings. You know what I mean? If that's how you feel, you you only listen to the white man. That's cool. I listen to Joe Rogan too, but I listen to. I listen to all the smoke. I listen to the Can Ryan and them. I listen to Joe Buttons. I listen to Nori. I'm not no hater, man. I, we the that you can call. And we like, oh no, you need the plug. All right, huh? This the number, man. When you holler at the man, ask me for ten million, man. I'm telling you, you can get it. We the man. we ain't trying to step in. You know that. You know that firsthand. You know me and Wallow had these calls because we kind of play the same part in our groups. Yeah. You know what I mean? We kind of go out there and source and figure out what the going on and then take it back. I mean, Wally, you got a book. You just told me about the lit you hit in the medical marijuana space. Talk to us about the business that birthed from Million Dollars with the Game. You know, uh, I think the New York Times bestseller, man. Oh, yeah. Make some noise, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's New York Times bestseller. It's out. Oh, it's out. Yeah, it's been out. Ten City. I got Yeah, just did a Ten City book tour. All up, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's going to- about that journey, I mean, to reflect on your drive and you still have so much more to go, but what did it mean to be able to put that on the pages and share with the rest of the world? I think, um, you know, it's always good that we show our similarities in our journey. That's why I never take nothing off my page because I need you to see me in Nanny House. I need you to see me running down the street. I need you to see me in the minivan. I need you to, because our culture now, we look at celebrity and we only look at the end game. We look at their glory, we don't look at their story. I need you to see me up trying to figure it out. Sure. And Nanny House, when I put that $1,000 on the bed, I mean, I need you to see me when I'm eating the Moodle's News because I really ain't got no bread to go get me. I'm rather, you know, I'm saving this money, I'm stacking this shit. I need you to see me in a minivan, you know. If you, if you go back, right, and the journey is important because I need you to see that this book is filled with L's, all these losses. Lost, lost, lost. And at the end, chapter two, at the end, you start seeing me win, but it's like, I need you to understand that I'm not better than you and you not better than me. And our journeys is the same. It's about who gonna give up and who not. At the end of the day, people be this close to their dream and it's like, you only need one to say yes. And everything that you work hard for and all the L's you took, and that's, and that's what I'm showing you in this book, a bunch of L's, then the yes start, yeses start coming. I made the ghettos of Philadelphia my backdrop. You might see me doing a video in a lot. You might see me doing a video with some mattresses. You might see me doing a video in a abandoned building because I was trying to bring, you know, positivity to a place where there's struggle at. I'm just trying to figure out life. So to show you, listen, I'm trying to figure it out too, but I'm gonna push you. And you know, it was just a connection and I connected with the people that needed it the most. It wasn't for everybody, I'm cool. There's eight billion people on the planet. A couple hundred thousand with it cool, that's all you need. So I was just pushing on that. <laughs>
And the people, one thing about human beings, if you consistent on something, especially when it's positivity and trying to encourage them, it's gonna be one day that you're gonna crack through that you might help them. And I was just chasing one day from Abe the people I could get, and that's how that took off, and that's what I'm sharing in the book. So his whole thing, he don't, he know, he don't believe that I know more stories. Just guarding angels on the f train. So you remember the movies to ride the trains back in the day with the ass? Yeah, girl, yeah, yeah, man. He's a man. He always been the bitch his whole life, man. Some old head tried to slap me in the laundry, man. Oh! 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 oh. oh My brothers. Go ahead, man. The brothers. My brothers, man. Oh, hold this game. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. She was she That's when I was playing. Yo, yeah, hold up. That's man. That's oh, he got my kid on. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what the I do. Come on, cuz. Come on. That's what I do. Y'all see, don't hate on my shit. Come on, cuz. Come on, cuz. You ain't got it. You ain't got it. Oh! You see me? Come on, cuz. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what we do, baby. for uh, Sunny Hill. What happened was, I f my ACL up right now. See, you gotta understand this. Hey, he said it fucked his ACL. I was playing for, I, at the time, I was playing for eight, I was playing for Sunny Hill. I had Seton Hall, Temple, Penn State, and uh, North Carolina trying to get me. And yeah, you, you heard about me, right? Oh, you never heard? See, well, I ain't gonna tell you no more. So, I would say, obviously, these days, I got kids at your age, and I think there's a lot of distractions out there. So I would say the most important thing is, you know, stay true to yourself, stay true to your schoolwork, but then you gotta work. Everybody in the world wants to be on that level. And there's been less than, as long as the NBA's been around, there's been less than 5,000 people in that game. So you gotta be the best of the best. So you gotta work hard. You gotta work hard, you gotta stay focused. I say the most important thing is the mental side because once you get there, everybody is skilled. And how do you stay focused and able to continue to grow your game and continue to hold that spot? Because as soon as you get there, everyone's coming for you. Everyone's coming for you on and off the court. Hey, hey, and I'm gonna say hey, that. I wanna, I wanna to touch on that. And then too, you gotta believe in yourself. Like, you, I'm somebody who made a lot of mistakes, right? I made a lot of mistakes, but you gotta believe in yourself and control, and control your own narrative, right? You're gonna make mistakes, it's, and, and a lot of things not gonna be easy, but don't learn from people ahead of you. Don't put yourself in a position where you've seen other people mess up. Learn from other people's mistakes, right? There's it's no reason for you to make mistakes trying to be an, be an athlete when there's so many other athletes that messed up their careers, right? So look at the people that did it wrong and, and try not to make the same mistakes they made. That's the easy way to look at it.